Father, we worship you this morning. We receive the tithe and the offering of your people in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, even as we go into your word, we ask that you alone will be lifted in the name of Jesus. Let's just worship him for maybe two times with that song. Oh, be lifted. Choir, help me. Oh, be lifted above oh, all other gods. Be lifted above all we cast our worries we lay it at your crown at your feet this morning and we worship you father we ask that even as we go into your word that you will be lifted we will see no man but we will see you father give us understanding give us revelation by your word speak a word of hope father a word that will take us from bitterness to sweetness this morning a word that will take us from fear to faith this morning in the name of Jesus blessed be the name of the Lord glory and honor be unto you for it is in Jesus mighty name we worship hey. somebody shout hallelujah choir thank you Let thank you you may be seated please appreciate the fountain of praise this morning hallelujah again I uh, just bring us a word from the Lord this morning and I pray that this word even as it blesses you it will bless me as well. And always, as always, I want to appreciate my husband, Pastor T, for giving me the opportunity one more time to bring us a word this morning. It's something that I don't take for granted. And I believe that indeed that word would minister life to you as it ministers also to me this morning in Jesus' name. I just ask that we open up our hearts and receive the word um, you know, of God make sure that you mix it with faith this morning and i believe without a doubt it would work for you in jesus name and our main scripture this morning is from exodus chapter 15 exodus chapter 15 and i will read from verse 22 exodus 15 from verse 22 to 27 then moses led israel from the red sea are we there at home, I want to believe you are there. Please connect with us and you can. Let's rise for the word. Let's rise as we read the word together. Even at home, rise with your family, your husband, your wife, the children. Rise up this morning and honor the word of God. Hallelujah. From verse 22. Then Moses led Israel 
from the Red Sea and they went into the desert of shore. For three days they traveled in the desert without finding water. And when they came to Mara, they could not drink its water because it was Peter. This is why this place is called Mara. Amen. So the people grumbled against Moses saying, what are we to drink? When Moses cried unto the Lord and the Lord showed him a piece of wood, he threw it into the water and the water became sweet. There the Lord made a decree and a law for them. And there he tested them. Verse 26, he said, If you listen carefully to the voice of the Lord your God, and you do what is right in his eyes, if you pay attention to his commands, and keep all his decrees, I would not bring on you any of the diseases I brought on the Egyptians. For I am the Lord. Let's say that one more time. For I am the Lord who heals you. Hallelujah. The last verse 27 then they came to Elam where there were 12 springs and 70 palm trees and they camped there near the water. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in Jesus name. Amen. You know here we read this story, beautiful story in Exodus chapter 15. In fact, if you were to start from the very first verse of that, of that chapter, amen, you will realize that really in that same chapter, a few days earlier, God had just delivered the children of Israel from the Red Sea. He had just parted the Red Sea. You know, and we remember the Bible says that he parted it and each side of the sea became walls and the way was made for them. And the pathway was made for them so that they walked through. And after the children of Israel had walked through, all of the Egyptians and their horses and their chariots, the Bible says, were destroyed be behind them because immediately they had crossed over what happened immediately the waters came back hallelujah the waters came back he had just taken them through that miracle amen and now they were on that journey they were continuing in on that journey to the promised land brethren you are on a journey even in spite of everything that is going on i don't want us to lose sight uh, that we are still on your journey your journey to your sin will not be thwarted in the mighty name of Jesus God has not changed his mind about where he's taking you a place of destiny, a place of abundance, a place of healing a place where there is milk and honey, the Bible says he was taking them to a land that was flowing with milk and with honey and brethren imagine, just imagine three days, they had only been through this miracle and the Bible says they walked and they were walking and they walked for the first day. You know, when I look at it, I cast my mind back, you know, a few times when my children were younger and I would be driving them through somewhere and they'll be like, we're thirsty and we're looking for the next, you know, gas station or the next McDonald's where we will get something quick for them to eat. Can you imagine maybe the nursing mothers, the little ones around them, they were walking for one day, no water. They walked for the second day, no water. And the third day, hallelujah, can you imagine the joy when they saw a spring before them? Ha! Ah, finally, a provision has been made. Finally, water has come. Hallelujah. And the Bible says that they had worked for those three days. I believe that even the scientists will tell us or the medical professionals will tell us that we can only go for about three days without water. So if they had not come across something, some of them would have started to what? To die. Praise the name of the Lord. You will not die under pressure. In the mighty name of Jesus, the Lord you will keep your faith safe and secure in Jesus' name. And the Bible says they had worked for three days. And they go to this wilderness. The Bible says it was the wilderness of shore. S-H-U-R. And I looked at the meaning of shore. Shore means a point of observation. So they go to a point in their lives where they could relax and begin to observe what was going on. They go to a point in their lives where they could begin to take stock. And I know that even around the world globally and even in America, here, you know, we are at a point in our lives where some of us need to start to take stock. You know, in our house, pastor will call us, including me, the children will sit down. Where are we at? We still did it yesterday. What is next for us as individuals? Can you begin to, you know, take stock? So they sat for a minute. They were in the wilderness of Shore. They said, yes, we are at the point where we can start to see. But interestingly, the point of view of the children of Israel was not a good one. And my question to you this morning is, what is your point of view? 
what do you see what do you see in your horizon and when they got there they began to take stock i'm sure they would have remembered that this god brought them from the land of Israel. and fact, in exodus chapter 2 i want to flip to that real quick in exodus chapter 2 the bible tells us something really interesting there praise the name of the lord exodus 2 23 to 25 so you can imagine the journey that the israelites had been through and i want to ask us this morning to also reflect where are you seeing from what are you seeing from 23 the bible says that during that long period the long period hallelujah the king of egypt had died while they were in egypt the Israelites groaned in their slavery and they cried out and they cry for help because of their because of their slavery went up to God. Their cry for help because of their slavery went up to God. Verse 24. Thank you. God heard what? God heard their groaning and remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and his, with Jacob. For so God looked on the Israelites. And he was concerned about them. And we serve a God that was not only concerned. What does verse 26 tell us? Hallelujah. The next verse. He said, God looked on the Israelites and he was concerned. Sorry, it's that same verse. But my own version here says that God looked upon them. And he knew it was time to act. I believe it's either the NIV or the NLT version. It says he knew it was time to want to act. God is looking upon you. Whole fountain of life. God is looking upon you at this hour. I want to challenge us this morning to make sure our point of view is not where we are. It should not be where we are. It is where God is one. Has promised to take us. Praise the name of the Lord. So back to the story here in Exodus chapter chapter 15. They reached a place where they could take stock of their situation. They tried to catch their breath and to make sense of it all. But their point of observation was not from the wilderness. Hallelujah. It was where it was. they were looking at their surroundings. It was not the final destination. Their point of observation was a bit biased. It was tainted because of what they were currently going through. You know, sometimes when we are in a difficult place in our lives, we need to stop and take inventory, take observation. Why am I here? Where am I at in my life? And I think that this season of lockdown gives us an opportunity in our lives to take a stock. Where am I at? With all that is happening right now, brethren, what is your own point of observation? How do you view it? Do you see God working it on out for your own good? What are you seeing? You know, a lot of times, we feel like God has brought us from a, you know, for some of us, we reflect. He's brought us from Nigeria and we're here now. We're thinking in our hearts, God, is this it? Is this all you have for me? For some of us, we're even thinking in our mind, we were better off where we are. After a while, as we know, the children of Israel started to doubt. They started to complain. We'll read further in the story. They started to murmur. They started to complain to Moses. You should have taken us back. You should have left us back in Egypt. At least we had water. Let's read on in that story. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the Bible says that they got there. Amen. And as they got there, the, the Bible says that they got to the water. And the water was what? was what was bitter when they came to Mara, they could not drink the water because it was bitter and of course as we all know that's why the place is called Mara. Mara is a place of bitterness amen it's beyond water it's a place of bitterness god was testing the israelites at this moment they had walked three days it was frustrating you know i imagine some of the children would have actually run ahead of the parents right because they couldn't wait to, to, to quench their thirst they would have run straight to that place and the moment they tasted the water imagine how they would have spat it out of their mouth how the bitterness would have come through and you know gone through some of them even through their throat and they would have started like you know pour it out hallelujah from their throat amen hallelujah praise the name of the lord we can all i said earlier we can only go about three days and they got to the point where they began to murmur. They began to, the, to be bitter. These were the people that when they were in bondage and slavery, as we read in Exodus chapter 2, they did what the Bible says, they cried out. They forgot to cry out. They forgot where their solution came from. May you not forget, even in times where things might seem tough 
Hallelujah. That your solution is nearer to you. Hallelujah than you can imagine. And that's my, my, my message unto us this morning. Your solution is nearer. Hallelujah. You can start to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Even from this moment. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. How are they going to make it through? After three days and now they are here. Nothing is coming through. Hallelujah. I imagine that some of them were beginning to get desperate. Hebrews chapter 12 verses 15 through 16. Look after each other so that none of you fails to receive the grace of God. And I want to talk to us also on this point of bitterness. In this time, in this moment, I know some of us might have lost our job. It might be tough to put food on the table. Some of us had goals and plans we wanted to accomplish by April of this year and now we're still on lockdown. I think about students that really should be planning to graduate right now and they're like am I really going to accomplish my goal this year hallelujah the, the news unto us is to not be bitter that, Hebrew, that scripture in Hebrews chapter 12 verse 15 to 16 says look after each other so that none of you fails to receive the grace of God hallelujah watch out that no poisonous root of bitterness grows up in you, corrupting many. One of the reasons that bitterness is very, very, very dangerous is because it takes root. Once it takes root in our heart, hallelujah, it begins to grow. It begins to spread. It spreads to your behavior. It spreads. It begins to trouble you. It begins to corrupt people around you. It begins to defile you. It begins to contaminate your heart. I want to announce to us today, wherever you may be, even during this time of lockdown and of quarantine and self-isolation, make sure that you do not give bitterness towards, you know, any man that is the, the constituted authority. That's what the children of Israel were doing here. They began to question the man that God had put in place of authority. They began to question the constituted authority. They began to murmur. Hallelujah. Brethren, we cannot change our situation by murmuring. But somebody knew what to do. And may you be that somebody this morning. May you be that somebody this morning. Somebody knew exactly what they needed to do. And Moses knew exactly what he needed to do. And the Bible tells us that Moses cried out. And the Bible says what? Moses, he was the one that did the right thing. Same in that Exodus chapter 15. Hallelujah. The Bible says Moses cried out to the Lord. And the Lord showed him a piece of wood. Brethren, even in these times, what God expects from you and I is to cry out to him. What he expects from you and I is to cry out unto the Lord. For the Lord would hear our cry. It says that no man that cries out unto him will the Lord turn back. It says as many as David said, I cried unto the Lord in my distress. And the one, the Lord heard me. I cried out unto him in my trouble. And the Lord delivered me. The Lord will deliver you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever deep your trouble is, no matter how bad it has gotten, I want to announce to somebody this morning that the grace of God is more than sufficient for you. You will be delivered. You will be set free. The Lord will make ways for you. The Lord will make room for you. In the name of Jesus. And I believe that as Moses took that wood and he obeyed the Lord and he threw that wood into the water the Bible says that suddenly the water became good to drink. Hallelujah. The water suddenly became sweet. Mara turned to what? Elim for them. In the mighty name of Jesus. And I want to tell us this morning be in a place of reverence be in a place of peace pastor was talking to us a few i think two weeks ago about resting in the peace of god hallelujah and i thought about i said how come moses didn't do what the children of israel did hallelujah the bible already tells us that in psalm 103 that the that God showed his ways unto Moses and he showed his deeds to the children of Israel. So Moses knew that this God would make a way. Moses stood out. Moses knew that this God, hallelujah, was going to do something miraculous just as he had done before because he gave a promise unto the children of Israel and he will bring it to pass. On the other hand, the children of Israel only knew God by
by the deeds and by the miracles uh, that he had done for them. How, do you know this God only by the miracles he has done? Or do you know him uh, whether he does miracles or not? That he is the king of kings. That he is the lord of law. That he was, is the same God yesterday, today and forever. The God that can never fail. The God that can never deny himself. Has he given you a word of promise? He is the same one that would bring it to pass. Hallelujah. Make sure that you are not bitter. Praise the name of the Lord. Back to our story in chapter 15. Thirst had consumed them. Hallelujah. They did not have enough reserves to even go back to the way that they had come. Yet they couldn't drink the water that was in the front of them. Hallelujah. You know, Proverbs chapter 13 verse 12 tells us that hope that is different makes the heart sick. At that point, they would have lost hope even before Moses took that stick and put it in the water. I want to announce to you, do not lose hope. I pray that today God will give you hope for every despair in the name of Jesus. Everything that is long delayed in your life, that is taking a long time to come through, the Lord will come through for you and he will do it speedily in Jesus' mighty name. And I can imagine they began to develop a bad attitude. Brethren, God is looking at our attitude. In fact, in that scripture, the Bible says that God tested them. You know, sometimes when we're breaking down scriptures, we say maybe God did this to test them. In fact, this one was without a doubt. The Bible says that there, it was there that the Lord tested them. And it set forth a decree as a standard to test their faithfulness to him. So in this moment, at this hour, God is also testing your own faithfulness. Would you give up, hallelujah, on this God? Or would you hold on to him? I'm looking at people even over our, our internet line this morning. I'm looking at people that will hold on to God. I'm looking at people that will stand up. That no matter how late, that this God will come through for me. Hallelujah. I will not give up. The Bible says hope. This hope, hope that we have in him. It does not disappoint us. Keep your hope aligned. For your solution is coming in Jesus mighty name. Brethren, our attitude is everything. Our attitude at this moment is very important. I want to tell us five things, hallelujah, that, it, it, that, it, why, that, that make it important for us to not have a bad attitude even at this hour. Being in a bad place with a bad attitude, it does several things to you and I. Number one, it makes things worse. It makes things worse. We cannot change it. The situation would only get worse if we have a bad attitude of bickering, of being bitter, hallelujah, towards one another, hallelujah, towards the leadership, towards the authority, rather than pray for them by crying out to God. The second thing, it places your focus more on the problem than on the situation, hallelujah. When we cry out to the Lord, it takes our eyes off the problem, hallelujah, and places our eyes on the solution, Hallelujah. But if you keep your eyes on the problem, amen, by having a bad attitude, it just it magnifies that problem rather than diminishing it. The third thing, it keeps your, you from having an open mind, an open heart. And what I've noticed is when our hearts are very bitter, when we choose to not forgive, when you choose to, we choose to not look unto God and cry out unto him for help, after a time, what happens is even the Holy Spirit is grieved. The Lord cannot minister to us anymore. We cannot receive anything from the Holy Spirit. Why? Because our hearts are so bitter with bad attitudes and what we are experiencing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Having a bad attitude, the fourth thing it does, it destroys creativity and resourcefulness. Amen. This is a time to be creative. It's a time to be resourceful. But the, more, the, the longer we stay being bitter in our situation, the longer we stay being unhappy about that situation, the, the, the more that we kill any creativity and innovation that God wants to bring your way. Hallelujah. You know, I read the story of a guy named Dave Ellis. Dave Ellis is a secular gentleman, you know. It says that he discovered a life of sweetness. He discovered a life of sweetness, a life of happiness. And he said there was just one secret to it. You know, this man actually wrote a book called Falling Awake. Finding the life of your dreams. Even in this lockdown, you, your dreams will come true. In the name of Jesus, you will find that life of your dreams. And he shared some habits that he developed over time that made 
made him happy. He developed some habits that over time made him overlook what those challenges were and accomplish his goal. The first thing he said was, one of my habits is I live off of 25% of my income. This was a millionaire. He owned a business. And he said, I only live off of 25%. The other 75%, I give it away. Pastor was sharing that scripture earlier with us when we gave, right? What that one? Jesus would tell us when I was hungry, right? You fed me. He said that was one thing that was dear to him. Even though he could have lived off of 100% or 80%, he said, I chose to live over only off of 25%. The second habit he said was, I ended each day by rehearsing the, jo the joys of those days. You know, even as this lockdown is, I take a step back to at the end of the day, what are the things I can be thankful for? We are alive and well. Hallelujah. We have not lost our mind. God is still making provision for me. My hours might have been reduced, but I still have some hours to work. I might have lost my job. Hallelujah. But I have life and I have hope. And this guy says, each day, you know, he will sit down. He will sit down intentionally and say, what are the things I can be happy about today? What are the things I can give thanks for today? Praise the name of the Lord. My children are happy. My children are healthy. Hallelujah. My husband, is. our marriages are intact. Hey, Amen. We are not rushing our children back and forth to hospitals for things even unrelated to coronavirus. Even as we speak, daily people are still dying of things that are not COVID-19 related. Praise the name of the Lord, but God is keeping you and I in sound health. He said one other thing he does is habits like operating his million dollar business by helping his rivals. How many of us can do that? People that you know are your biggest competition. Hallelujah. In business. He said one of his habits was one. He intentionally found ways that he could help them. And the last one that he shared and I love so much. He says habits like forgiveness. He shared how a business partner embezzled millions of dollars from the company. Everyone told Dave, Dave Ellis, you can go back and read the story. Everyone told Dave to sue this guy, but he decided he did not want to live a life fighting over little when he could focus the fees that he would even pay maybe the attorneys and bump it back into the business. He said that today, that guy that embezzled millions of dollars from his business, they are one of some of the best friends still today. He said every day he has breakfast with him. Praise the name of the Lord. What is your attitude at this time? Are you seeing the cup half full or are you seeing your cup half empty? Are you looking at creating opportunities, hallelujah, that abound and discover or even discovering them? Hallelujah. My prayer is that in this time, in this season, the Lord will strengthen you. You will not lose focus in Jesus' mighty name. You will not be bitter. You know, it's very important. Pastor was telling us last week about asking God questions. A lot of us are asking God questions. It is okay to ask, but in all of your asking, make sure that you are not bitter because your solution is around the corner. Because you might be experiencing Mara at this moment, but your enemy is around the corner. In the mighty name of Jesus. So in all of the chaos, in all of the bitterness around him, in all of the trouble, Moses chose to cry out unto the Lord. And the Bible tells us that he threw the wood. And I believe for us as Christians, that wood that has been thrown into our situation is the cross of Calvary. It's the cross of Jesus. When he died for you and I on that cross of Calvary, when he shed the blood, hallelujah, so that whatever bitterness might be in your life, whatever might not make sense in your life, then the blood of Jesus is dropped. Only a sprinkle of that blood is dropped upon that situation. The Lord turns bitterness into sweetness for you. In the name of Jesus, the Lord will turn sickness into healing for you uh, in the name of Jesus ah the Lord will make ways for you uh, even in the desert in the mighty name of Jesus he will make streams of water for you even in the wilderness hallelujah hallelujah praise the name of the Lord and we don't want to forget that scripture too when the Lord said that he tested them he gave them a decree and you will remember that they had not received the ten commandments at that time because the Ten Commandments was not until five chapters later in Exodus chapter 20. So what was the decree that God was giving them here? 
what was he asking them to do here hallelujah you will receive an own, your own instruction from the Lord even in this season and my prayer is you will follow through to be obedient hallelujah to every word that the Lord your God will give you in the mighty name of Jesus and what I love about the story is that they did not camp at Mara because Mara was not God that promised them what I love about the story was even though the water became okay, right? And they could drink from that water. God had more for them. Can I announce to you, you might think that you have seen it all at this moment. But God says, I'm still bringing abundance your way. God says, I'm still bringing streams of water your way. I'm still bringing streams of healing in your way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And as they journey through... The Bible says that Elam was only seven miles. Elam was only seven miles from Mara. Do you know they could have said, let's just stay at Mara. At least we have one river that we can all want, that we can all share and still keep our families and our sheep alive. Amen. But the Bible tells us that they journey on. Huh? In that last verse, verse, 20, verse 27, it says that then they did what? Then they came to Helm, where there were what? 12 springs and 70 palm trees. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Brethren, when God has put a comma in your life, do not put a period. Or we call it a full stop. Amen. God is only saying, I am at a comma. I have yet more to do. I have yet more to do. Caleb says, ah, there is yet more land to conquer. Hallelujah. I believe that after this season, a lot of us will go and conquer many lands for the Lord in the name of Jesus. And the Bible says that they got to Elam. They, they went forward for seven miles and they found their Elam. Brethren, who would have thought that they were only seven miles away from abundance? Where a, a few miles away, a few days away, they were, they were struggling. They were thirsty. Some of them would have long dropped dead if that solution did not come their way. In the name of Jesus, can I announce to you this morning that so your solution is nearer than you ever imagined your solution is nearer than you ever thought don't stop at your mara when God says there's an elem in your way and we know the implication of 12 when God does it he does it mightily we know the implication of 12 we know the implication of 70 the Bible says that he brought them to Elim where they had wells of water where they would not have to struggle the Bible says he gave them 12 wells of water we know that we're 12 what? 12 tribes of Israel when God takes you to the place of abundance you wouldn't have to struggle there will be more than enough for you there will be more than enough for your children for your family more than enough for people that God wants you to influence the Bible also says that he took them to the the place where there were 70 palm trees hallelujah 70 palm trees we all know the implication of 70 after seven 70 years in the book of daniel amen the bible says that their babylonian captivity was over god is about to deliver somebody because he's taking you to your place of 12 wells of water he's taking you to your place of 70 palm trees in the name of jesus where you will not struggle where you will not labor because the favor of god because the hand of God will be mighty upon your life. And the Bible says they got to Elim and they come there. They knew that the Lord had made room for them. They knew that God had brought them to a place of refreshing. They knew that God had brought them to a place of abundance. They knew that God had brought them to the place of the overflow. They knew that no longer would they struggle. They knew that no longer would they thirst for God for decades as it was going to take them through those that the wilderness had made provision hallelujah hallelujah hold on to this God this God is faithful as we've said over and over he knows exactly what he is doing he knows exactly what he is doing don't stop where God has only said put a comma for now hallelujah move on in your journey and I don't know if anybody has wondered what does Elim mean? Elim doesn't only mean sweetness. Elim actually means the strong, the robust, and the mighty ones. Even in the land of famine, God will make you to be the strong ones. You will be the robust ones. 
you will be the mighty ones. These people went from being the bitter ones to the ones that were now strong, to the ones that were now robust, and to the ones that were now mighty. You know, over the past three days, they were doing the NFL draft to bring it down to us. Even in when people during this season, when we're all saying, ah, there's not enough, or we're all, you know, we're down. Some of us, I'm like, I'm, you know, I know my son put something on Twitter. Ah, I've never been this bored in my life. I'm like, you'll be okay. It is well with you in Jesus' name. But the NFL draft is going on. All these young 20 something year old boys, some of them are smiling to the bank because their life has changed. Even in this lockdown, I mean, some of them signed 30 million contracts. Some of them signed 15 million contracts. 21, 20, 22 year old boys. Brethren, may the Lord make you the strong one. May the Lord cause you to be robust. May the Lord bring you to that promised land. Even in this season, in the name of Jesus. I mean, if you go and call our, a lot of them, even some of our Nigerian boys, go and call Noah, you'll be not getting out and say, ah, Noah, it is a bad time well, because we're in lockdown. He will say, I don't see anything bad in my own horizon. Hallelujah. Things are working for my good. All things are working for me. And May that be your portion in the mighty name of Jesus. Isaiah chapter 43 and verse 16 to 19. The Lord says, I am the Lord who opened a way through the waters. I made a dry path through the sea. I call for the mighty army of Egypt with all of his chariots and his horses. I drew them beneath the waves and they drowned. The Lord is causing all your enemies to drown. Their lives were snuffed out like a smoldering candle wick. But forget all all that God is telling us this morning, but one forget all that. I'm reading the NLT version, Isaiah 43. There is nothing, this is nothing what I have done in the past, it's nothing compared to what I'm going to do for you. For I'm about to do something new. See, I have already begun. Do you not see it? I will make a pathway through the wilderness, I will create deepness in the dry wasteland. And that is the word unto somebody this morning. The Lord is about to do a new thing. It shall be well with you. You will not give in, you will not give up. You will not stop where God says pause. You will not stop where God says pause. The Lord God Almighty, He will lift you up. He will take you to your high places. The Lord will refresh you. The Lord will take you to your place of abundance. He will cause you to be strong. Ah, your strength will not be small. Even in this season, cause the Lord God Almighty, He will strengthen your hand. He will strengthen your feet. You will make it to your promised land. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah! Brethren, and this change, this change came about for the children of Israel in only one day. God is able to, able to change it around. He's able to turn your situation around for good in only one day. In the twinkling of an eye, is able to turn it around. Hallelujah! But God is saying to somebody this morning, even as Moses threw that wood into the water, it cleansed every bitterness. It cleansed every anger. It cleansed everything that made that water not to be sweet. It removed every poison. The same thing God is saying to somebody this morning is would you allow me to walk on your own heart? God is saying this is a time to remove every bitterness, to remove every anger from you. Have you been hurt as the Pharaoh holds you in your life? Move from your Mara. You cannot get to your Elim until you move from your Mara. Has somebody betrayed you in the past? Move from your Mara so that you can achieve your Elim. Has somebody cheated on you in the past? God is saying, let the blood of Jesus, hallelujah, work on your heart. Forgive that the seasons of refreshing, that the seasons of fruitfulness might come. Hallelujah. Father, we give you praise. Father, we give you praise. And I don't know what you heard for a moment. Just pray that prayer for a moment. He says he wants to work on our heart. That's what I'm hearing in our spirit. He says, but some of us are limiting him. For as long as we're holding bitterness, can you cast your mind back to what this God has done? He says, can you cast your mind back to the battles I've won on your behalf? Can you cast your mind back when you did not know where the meal was going to come from and yet I came through? Can you cast your mind back to when you thought that sickness was going to kill you and I healed you according to that word that he gave the children of Israel? Hallelujah, that he would heal. 
that I am the Lord that he led you hallelujah let the Lord walk on our heart I believe this is a time for healing it's a time of forgiveness it's a time to launch forward step away from your Mara that your Elim might come that your robustness might come in the name of Jesus and as I round up if there's anyone in the Bible that encourages us to forgiveness was Joseph can we take a clue from the life of Joseph this morning the Bible says that with everything that his brothers did unto him he chose to not have Mara in him he chose to not be bitter God wants to do some things in your life God cannot speak to some of us at this moment because we're still bitter in our hearts about something we're still angry he says be angry but do not sin he says why because anger rests in the bosom of fools because we are not fools we will not allow anger to reside to take roots and the Bible tells us that Joseph after he, he, he was made the prime minister and began to flourish in the land of Egypt in a foreign land and the Bible says that God blessed him I'm rounding up God blessed him with two sons and that's where we will end today hallelujah in Genesis chapter 41 we can go back and read Genesis chapter 1, 41 verses 51 and 52 and then Mo, Joseph had his first child Joseph named that first child what? what was Joseph's first child, child name? the Bible says he named it Manasseh for he said that one God has made me to forget may God cause you to forget every trouble of this season every trouble of this COVID-19 may God cause you to forget he says he has caused me to forget all my trouble he has caused me to forget everyone in my father's family Joseph did not forget them it is impossible I will never forget my brothers and my sisters but what Joseph was saying is that I have chosen to not remember everything bad that they did to me and move on in verse 52 when he had the second and he had moved on hallelujah from his Mara he moved on from the bitterness he moved on from all the evil they did and then he had a second son and he called his name what Ephraim and he said what for God has made me to be fruitful in this land of my grief hallelujah and Ephraim actually means to be fruitful twice to be doubly fruitful I know that somebody is coming out with their babies somebody is coming out with their dreams it's a season of fruitfulness for you in the name of Jesus begin to bless the Lord for the word you've heard this morning bless the Lord bless the Lord I don't know what you have to let go I don't know what you who you have to release so that God can bring the healing strength so that God can bring revelation so that God can give you wisdom so that he can begin to open your eyes to those things that he wants you to accomplish pray this morning oh father we bless you we give you all the glory we're going to thank the Lord Father, I release, I release, I release for a moment. Pray that prayer, pray that prayer for one moment. I release, I step from my Mara. Brethren, you cannot get to your enemy until you go through your Mara. God is willing to take you through your Mara. But will you have the right attitude so that God can do that which he has proposed to do in your life? Oh, Father, we give you praise. We thank you for your word unto us this morning. Your word of healing, your word of power. Oh, Father, we thank you. We thank you for walking in our hearts in order that we might bear fruit on the outside. Father, I pray this morning for everyone under the sound of my voice, whatever bitterness they might have experienced, even they might even be experiencing at this moment, give them the right attitude by the power of your Holy Spirit. Father, I pray that we will not fail you, we will not disappoint you. We let go, oh God, and we let you. We begin to walk through the new things that you are about to start in our lives. It's a new beginning for you. It's a new season for you. It's a new era for you. It's a new dispensation for you. Father, we receive it in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Somebody praise. Somebody praise over the line. I don't know what you heard in your spirit this morning. But give him praise, give him praise. He that gave you this one, he will accomplish it in your life. In the name of Jesus. If you are watching, watching us for the first time, we say welcome. We are a parish of the redeemed Christian Church of God. Fountain of life from out here in the beautiful state of Illinois, the USA. God bless you. And we're just going to close in worship for a few minutes. Choir will take us through worship. Hallelujah. And I will be back to just share the grace with us. And we will be done. God bless you.
Let's appreciate the Lord one more time. Appreciate the Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, we give you praise. Come and just wave those hands to Jesus. We worship you, Holy Spirit of the Most High God. We give you praise. We worship you. We worship you. <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah to your holy name. You alone deserves the praise. You alone deserves the worship. Come on, raise the voice and worship him. Give him all glory. Give him all adoration. We worship you, Lord. God. We worship you. We worship you. Oh, yeah. We give you praise.
make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious unto you. May this God lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace in this week on an unending peace, unspeakable joy. Rest upon you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's share the grace and fellowship and may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ 